All right. We're so honored to have you today. Uh, of course, the Honorable Karen Yarbrough. Everybody know who she is. She's such an amazing person. That's a good place for amen. That's a good place for a clap. All right. Say self. Say self. I make it a business not to go nowhere where I'm not happy. I'm looking at some of y'all. Y'all didn't even laugh. Lord, help them, Jesus. Lord, help them. We want to honor Pastor Tanya Brockington and Pastor Tony Brockington. Lift your hands and say, hey. The rest of the pastors and people are on their way. All right, let us pray. Uh, Lord, we love you. Thank you for your awesome guidance. Thank you for your mercy and your grace. Thank you for being a God that's true. No matter what's happening in the world, you are a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway in every area of our lives. Bless this meeting. Let it be productive, impactful, informative, and that it may bring life and it more abundantly. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, I'd like to now uh, introduce to some and present to others. Um, she says, she really is. I don't say that. I'm not into politics. Um, I'm not. I really, I'm really, I'm into the word of God. That's where I'll always stay, uh, which is why I'm safe and I'm peaceful. But this young lady has really challenged me to you know, consider just being a part for what it's worth and how the community and people can be helped. And that's why I love her. I honor her. I celebrate her. I respect her. And, and she really is this kind of person. Say self, what you do is not who you are. But when you become what you do, you lose who you are. And if God has given you a leadership position, you're to inspire before you expire. That's what leadership is about. You inspire before you expire. Okay, do me a favor, stand to your feet. Let's put those hands together for the Honorable Karen Yarbrough. Thank you so much, Pastor, and thank you for allowing us to be here today. And to your beautiful wife, who is your partner in life, thank you. Thank you. Thanks, thanks to the clergy who are here with us uh, today. Um, you're going to learn some things today, and there's no dumb question, so just ask away after we give our presentation. But I want to bring Robin Staggers up. Come on, Robin. Robin is my right-hand woman. Everybody ought to have a right-hand woman, okay? Robin um, puts these events together. She reaches out into community and identifies opportunities for us to share the good news. We have good news in the clerk's office too, okay? We do, we do. And I'm gonna give her the microphone so she can share her information and then I'll be back. Robin. <laughs> good evening. She works me hard. <laughs> No, but um, it's a pleasure to be here. I enjoy what I do, and I just appreciate the clerk for allowing me to do this and represent her and our office across the Cook County. Um, it's not easy what we do, but it's, uh, it's necessary what we do. So first of all, um, I'm Robin Staggers. I am the Community Affairs Liaison for the Cook County Clerk's Office. So I'm the one that you would contact if you want to have an event such as this. Um, and I'm going to do housekeeping. So thank you for coming out in such inclement weather, because you didn't have to do it, but you did. And I thank you for that. I want you to, first of all, silence your cell phones so that any ringing or chiming does not interfere with the flow of this event, okay? Secondly, the washrooms are located, if, you're, if you've not been here before, they're located out of this exit or the exit behind you. And if you go this way, they're to your left, women's first and then the men's. And if you go that way, it's the men's first, and then the women's. Um, you were given some things when you came in, right? You have index card, you have index cards, you got a property fraud alert form, 
and you got another form. Now, with those index cards, we're gonna ask you to hold your questions or reduce them to writing on these index cards so that we can get through the presentation. Once we get through the presentation, we're going to have you can finish filling the cards out and we'll come around and collect the cards to give them to our legal counsels who are here to answer your legal questions, okay? Got it? So you're gonna hold your questions until when? At the end, and you're gonna reduce them to what? To the index cards, great. So thank you so much for coming and I'm going to give you back to the illustrious Karen Yarbrough. Stop it. I'm home, y'all. You know, I live right over in Maywood. Most of you know me. Um, I was former state representative for this uh, district, the seventh representative district. I left there after 12 years, went to Cook County, became the Cook County Recorder Deeds, and then became the clerk for Cook County, representing all 5.3 million people. And that includes the people in this room. So I want to ask you two questions, two questions. One, how many of you own your own home? How many? Okay. Second question, how do you know? Excuse me? How, how do you know? Oh, you pay your taxes. Uh, that's nice. The county likes that. We, we need the money. All these people are county employees. They want to get paid. So, so how, how do you know you own your home? You look where? On a deed, where do you see that? Where do you see the deed? Oh, you don't know. Okay, so <clears throat> if you have not been on my website and put your PIN number in and brought, brought up your chain of title and seen for yourself that your name is there, you really don't know that you own that home. We're gonna talk a little, little bit uh, this evening about property fraud. It happens, it happens in the suburbs, it happens in the city. It is, could have already happened to you. Not you, I'm sure. No, no, not you, no. The second question I wanna ask you, how many are gonna live forever? Put your, put your hands up here. What, that's right, hey, hey, I got one hand, pastor. Pastor, okay, you got to do better because I only saw one hand, pastor. Oh, 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 okay. Okay, let's try this one more time. How many of you are gonna live forever? Two people, two, three people. Pastor? Okay, okay. So those of you who are going to live forever, by the way, I'm gonna live forever, okay? Because I believe what God's word said. You know, I'm here today, I'm going tomorrow, but I'm gonna live forever over there. Okay, so hey, Pastor, you're gonna have to get with that one right there because yeah, they didn't get that. Three people, come on. They, anyway, so tonight, tonight you're gonna learn a lot and you're gonna have some questions. But this, this is a short presentation to kind of get your attention on this whole idea of no, we're not gonna live forever, not here, anyways. And we collect all of this stuff throughout our lifetime. And then, Pastor, I don't know about what happens when members pass away, but usually first it's the funeral, then it's the fight, because people haven't taken care of their business. Ask the morticians. Ask the morticians. They'll tell you, well, could you just kind of help us out? No, take care of your business. So we're going to talk about that, and we're going to talk about some people who should have taken care of their business, who certainly had the money to do so. And then we're going to talk more uh, a little later about what you need. You can ask any question that you want. And we want you to ask specific questions dealing with your situation. I see we have Pastor Brown in the house. Okay, I see, I know who you were from Second Baptist Church of Maywood. That was my home church for a long time, baptized in that church. So with that, I'm going to put the microphone down. I think we're ready to roll. Who, who, who's ready? Who's ready to roll? Can we turn the lights down? Do we turn the lights down? Are we going to see something here? What are we going to see? And where are we going to see it? Oh, okay. You want to turn the lights down or whatever? Okay. All right. I'm going to put the microphone down and on with the show. This is it.
Hello and welcome. I'm Karen Yarbrough, your Cook County Clerk. Thank you for joining us for this presentation on property fraud and managing your property after death. The Cook County Clerk's Office is one of the largest consolidated clerk's offices in the entire nation. In addition to functioning as the chief election authority for suburban Cook County, we maintain birth, marriage, and death records, and we assist property owners in redeeming delinquent taxes. We also have a recording operations division that records and stores land records and other official documents, which includes deeds, transfer on death instruments, and real estate documents. Now, nobody wants to talk about death or end of life planning, but it's a critical issue when it comes to managing your assets to protect your family and your loved ones. And we all need to be aware of the threat of property fraud and how we can guard against this type of financial crime. At the Cook County Clerk's Office, we are here to serve. And we hope that this information you received today will be helpful on these important issues that impact all of our daily lives. Now, I'd like to introduce you to my trusty assistant who will guide us through this presentation. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Before we begin our discussion, we wanna let you know that we will have volunteer attorneys available at the end of the presentation who can answer your questions about the topics we will be covering. If you are joining our program via Zoom and have questions that come up during the presentation, Simply type your question in the Q&A section through your Zoom link and the attorneys will respond accordingly. Now, let's begin our discussion by talking about property fraud, which can also be known as deed fraud. So, what exactly is property fraud? Property fraud is the fraudulent and illegal recording of a document against your home's property records. We call it paper terrorism and it's a very real problem and potential risk for all property owners. How can this happen? Almost every state has an open and public recording system, meaning that you cannot freeze your chain of title like you can your credit report. Plus, county recorders are not authorized by law to validate legal claims made in documents. Property fraud can involve the recording or filing of false or forged transfers of ownership quick claim deeds, or the filing of a bogus lien to steal property or harass an unsuspecting property owner. Even if your home is paid off, that does not stop someone from filing a new deed on top of it without the property owner's knowledge. Let's look at this NBC5 investigative report that takes a close look at how property fraud can occur. By law, it is a line anyone can stand in and a fee anyone can pay. $40 is all it takes to get a deed or other document officially recorded in Cook County, a simple perk of open government openly abused by serious scammers. I think they call them, you know, financial parasites. She was new to her office as recorder of deeds when Karen Yarbrough says she first spotted the trouble. To steal a home, all you have to do is doctor some paperwork up and Photoshop it, bring it to the recorder's office, record it, voila, you own a home. Con artists exploiting a system that relies on the honesty of those who use it, recording forged documents in order to steal a home outright. Sound far-fetched? This is a kind of crime that I never imagined that could happen. It did to Chicago treasurer Stephanie Neely until it happened to her. I get this call, I'm like, what do you mean someone has taken, changed the name on my deed? What, what do you mean? How did they do that? In her case, a stranger recorded a fraudulent deed, waited until she was at work, and then changed the lock. They want to physically be in your house. Because once they're there, it's very difficult to get them out. Precisely what happened to this Chicago woman. This individual had paperwork that uh, was Xerox that showed the deed was in his name. She asked us to conceal her identity because... You're in constant fear that they will try something next because, believe it or not, they did come back three days later. One man connected to her case was arrested and convicted. 
as the recorder's office continued to field fake documents. I decided that I couldn't sit idly by and watch this happen. Yarborough brought in this man. They believe that the government created artificial duplicates of all of us. An expert on sovereign citizens, the extreme anti-government movement often behind this crime. They believe they can completely ignore our government and do whatever they want to do with impunity. Pete Cavage calls it paper terrorism and teaches the red flags, like the punctuation sovereigns add in the middle of names, the refusal to use mainstream addresses or zip codes, and how they employ lengthy, arcane terms. The flurry of documents they file may be fake, but their threat is real. They're bullies. They're brazen. They think that nothing can touch them. A lot of times they'll come in and overwhelm our frontline staff. You know, it may be 20 of them will come in. Yarborough has a catchy comparison she uses to get a non-believer's attention. In Illinois, it is easier to steal a home than it is to steal a car. It's fraud and, you know, they're taking people's homes. So there is now a simple way for some homeowners to protect themselves, the free property fraud alert system. You load your property index number, then you get an alert if any document is recorded in connection with your property. Counties across the country are now turning to this kind of system as these cases of mortgage and property fraud continue to grow. Lisa Parker, NBC5, investigates. To combat this problem, Clerk Yarbrough created a property fraud unit with investigators and caseworkers who respond to and investigate any complaints of property fraud. The clerk's office also offers a free property fraud alert that will provide a telephone call or email to the property owner anytime a document is recorded against their property or the property of a loved one. There are three easy ways to sign up for the clerk's free property fraud alert. You may sign up in person at the clerk's office, you can sign up online, or you can sign up with a telephone call. Once registered, if you receive an alert or have a reason to be concerned about property fraud, you can contact the clerk's property fraud unit and our staff can help research the problem and coordinate a response. Call 312-603-4000 or visit our website at cookcountyclerk.com slash property fraud. On a related note, while we're on the topic of your chain of title and fraud, property owners often need to obtain an official copy of their property deed when purchasing a home or for tax purposes. You should be aware there is a predatory practice aimed at homeowners in which companies offer a copy of your property's deed at a large markup price, sometimes exceeding $200. The clerk's office wants to remind you that we offer the same service starting at just $6. So there's no reason to pay exorbitant prices to gain access to these essential documents. Now, let's move on to the second part of our program, which is making plans to manage your property and assets in the event of your death. As Clerk Yarbrough noted, no one wants to talk about death or end of life planning, but it's critical to manage your assets to protect your family and loved ones. Having a sound end-of-life plan is one of the greatest gifts that you can provide to your children and family members. Consider this. What do you think these three legendary individuals have in common? Prince. Aretha Franklin. Four score and seven years ago, our father and Abraham Lincoln. Actually, they have something very unfortunate in common. They failed to make plans for their assets upon their death. No will, no trust, and no plan. Now, let's consider someone who thought he had it right. Wow, I Music legend James Brown, the godfather of soul. When he passed away in 2006, Brown's estate was worth an estimated $90 million. When he died, Brown left behind a plan for most of his estate to pay for scholarships for children in need in South Carolina, the state where he was born. But that will was challenged by family members after his death, resulting in more than 12 lawsuits. It took more than a decade of litigation before Mr. Brown's assets were designated as he had intended. 
So how do you get it right when it comes to your property after death? The best advice is to consult an attorney or estate planning professional to provide you with advice for your specific circumstances. But you should also know that under Illinois law, you can transfer your home, your car, or your bank account to a loved one without a will or a trust and without having to pay any fees or court costs. Here are the details on how to transfer your property. First, a transfer on death instrument. The clerk's office has a free document on our website known as a transfer on death instrument. We call it a toady. No, not that kind of toady. You can also obtain this document at no cost from any attorney or legal aid organization. The form should be completed and notarized and then recorded at the clerk's office in our recording operations division. The transfer on death instrument will then be recorded on your property's chain of title. And upon your death, the person designated to receive your property can do so after completing the required forms. Please note that the clerk's office cannot assist you in the preparation of a transfer on death instrument or any legal document. We do not provide legal advice to customers. Next, let's discuss a payable on death instrument. You can transfer the funds from your local bank account in a similar way. Utilizing a tool known as payable on death instrument, a person can transfer assets in a bank account to the beneficiary of their choosing after death. A payable on death instrument can be obtained and used at most financial institutions for checking and savings accounts, as well as certificates of deposits, CDs, money markets, and savings bonds. Even if you have completed a payable on death instrument, the account holder has full control of their funds in the account until the time of their death. When the account holder passes, the beneficiary can claim specified assets directly from the financial institution without having to wait for probate court proceedings. Finally, let's discuss a beneficiary affidavit. There is also a mechanism to transfer your car to a designated beneficiary. A vehicle owner may change, add, or remove a beneficiary on the title of their car by completing a free beneficiary affidavit through the Illinois Secretary of State's office. To obtain this beneficiary affidavit, go to the Illinois Secretary of State website at www.ilsos.gov. Keep in mind that if money is still owed on your home or vehicle at the time of your death, your beneficiary will be responsible for the mortgage and payments moving forward. On behalf of Clerk Karen Yarborough, we hope that you have found this presentation useful. The clerk's office is your first line of defense against property fraud, so we hope that you will take this opportunity to sign up for our free property fraud alert if you have not already done so. Managing your property and your assets in the event of your death is also critical to protecting your family and your assets and to ensure that your wishes are carried out after your death. A copy of this presentation is available on the clerk's website if you would like to review it again or share with a friend or family member. Please visit www.cookcountyclerk.com slash PAD resources to review the presentation. Now let's ask the volunteer attorneys who are joining us to introduce themselves and we will open up our presentation for your questions. Hello. All right. All right. So um, my name is Devin Mapes. I'm one of the uh, attorneys for the uh, clerk in the clerk's office. Um, I have sitting next to me two uh, fine attorneys and I'll let them introduce themselves. Good evening. I'm Kathleen Farrell Duhigg. I'm an attorney with the law offices of Farrell and Farrell. Happy to be here today. And my name is Barbara Bertini. I'm the Associate Director of Community Partnerships for Legal Aid Chicago, but I am also an attorney. So nice to be here. Now, um, these attorneys next to me are uh, able to offer legal advice. I cannot offer legal advice as I work for the clerk's office, but I can um, answer questions regarding um, how our office functions with these items uh, and uh, other questions sort of like that. So. With that in mind, uh, looks like we have a few questions already. Question. Um, first of all, Devin, before you get started, um, how many of you need to sign up for our free property fraud alert? Okay. Um, 
Robin, would you make sure you see the hands that are up between you and Lindsay? And I don't know if Don is glued to the seat or not, but maybe he can get up and he can also take a look at uh, anybody who needs a form. Please make sure they get it and they complete it and hand it back into it. That's something you can do right now. Okay, so let's go on with the questions. We do have some folks online with us. And uh, Devin, are you going to field the questions? Great, thank you. Hello, there we go. All right, uh, I just wanna follow up on something the clerk was uh, talking about uh, with the uh, property fraud alert. I myself have, uh, signed up for this online, I can tell you it could not be an easier thing to do. You do need your PIN number associated with your property, uh, and then you'll need to list your phone and email, uh, and you can pick what your preference is to be alerted. Um, I did that for the property that my spouse and I live at, as well as my in-laws, and it took no more than five minutes, so um, for what that's worth to you. If you do not have your PIN number, we will get your PIN number for you because we can do it right here online. I want anybody and everybody that wants to sign up for the free, emphasis on free, property fraud alert tonight before you leave here today. In some other states, they charge $99 a year for this service. Cook County charges you the time it takes you to complete it and uh, send it in or do it here tonight. So uh, sometimes people wonder, you know, well, what do I get out of my tax dollars? Well, there's something that you get. Uh, there's another state, of, I don't know if it's Arizona or Texas, one of them, they charge $199 a year for this service. We do not. So please sign up for it. You got a question? You know what, I'm the, uh, the clerk for Cook, so I can't really speak to what Will County, but most of the counties in Illinois do have this program, most of them. Um, you can take a look at, who's the Will County? I was just with them, oh my God. But anyway, who, whoever the, the clerk is, you can go on that website and take a look. If they have it, it's gonna be on the website, okay? Any, any other questions about the property? Yes, yes, sir. I'm sorry? Who can you trust? Yes. They, they, they could. They could. They could. Uh, we have a fraud department and investigators. We put them in jail, okay? We've got five people we've put in jail so far. And I don't know what they've done in the last couple of months. But when we work up these cases, when we find that, now we can't, I mean, obviously we can't keep everybody to you know, do the right thing. Some, there's some people who are gonna simply, that's their job. That is their job. They're gonna try to scam and do whatever they're gonna try to do. This is our way of trying to head off some of that. Okay. Any other questions on the fraud program? But please sign up for it. I know I've signed up for it. And if you have a loved one, like if you have an older person in your family, like your mother or uh, a family member who really, you know, can't do this or doesn't know, you can have it come to you, you know, and, and sign it up. Okay? okay. And we've done that as well. Okay. You can start with the questions. We have lots of questions. Let's go. All right. Let's do uh, first question. Does the property automatically transfer to a spouse? Um, maybe as a point of clarification, um, who, who wrote the question? Just said a, all right. Uh, do you mean after filling out a toady? Do you need a toady as a married person in Cook County? So uh, that's a good question. It will depend on how your deed is written, right? So there's there's different forms of tenancy. Mm -hmm. If you are married and you're holding it in joint tenancy or tenants by the entirety, which is a married couple um, designation, mm -hmm. 
it will automatically transfer to the surviving joint tenant or the surviving spouse upon death. If it's held as tenants in common or it's not specified, then it won't automatically transfer. And so it, it is really important as to how that deed is worded. The other thing to add to that is you and your spouse may be together when things befall you. So it is always good to have a contingency plan. Say, I mean, I literally tonight emailed my attorney and said, oh my gosh, I, I'm still on our deed as joint tenants because my husband and I bought our property before we got married. So we have to change it to tenants by the entirety so that it will revert to him. But we are still doing a toady because what happens if we're in the car together and something happens? Then who gets the house? Boy. Thank you for the clarification. Nice question I have is, how are estate taxes handled? Um, so we, we can't address tax issues because it's more appropriate for a tax professional. Um, uh, the inheritance tax in Illinois is, and at the federal level, you're talking about millions of dollars. Um, and so uh, that's really more an appropriate question for your CPA or tax professional. All right, uh, next question. Can more than one person be listed on a toady? And the second follow-up, or the follow-up to that is, will that create conflict? Yes, and yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, I mean, more than one person can be listed and then and then certainly the um, the question is how will they handle that and you you may not be able to answer that you may not know how they'll handle it because it may change after your passing um, as to how people will act as the the clerk said um, you don't always foresee how people will handle things after your loved one passes away I oh. Next question, do you have to appear in person to request a copy of the deed? I believe the answer is yes. Say again. Get it online as well. Uh, I received, there's a follow-up on the same card. I received an administrator executor deed that was recorded at, the, at your office. I have the stamped papers I already received solicit solicitation in the mail for uh, I'm the one who asked the question. They're okay. requesting ninety dollars. You know, I got one of the letters that said, "Send in your ninety dollars. We'll send you a copy of your deed and all that." And my lawyer told me that was a scam. Yes, yes, that's absolutely a scam. That's a predatory practice. And and anytime I represent a client at a real estate closing where they purchase a home, I I specifically tell them disregard anything because this recorded deed is going to come from our office. So we always, I mean, my, my firm's practice is that we always have it sent to our office and then we mail it directly to the home purchaser. Um, that, those predatory practices. I, I purchased a home um, recently and, and I was getting them too, and they look very official. So just disregard you can always get a copy. If you, if for some reason you don't have it, it's public record, you can always get a copy on the clerk's website. All right, this next question is actually a two-parter. Uh, home was purchased by husband and I. His name is still in the mortgage, uh, but he is deceased. Question, what do I do now? And number two, can the home be put into my children's names upon my death? Okay, well, um, so, the mortgage part is, is a separate inquiry. Um, once you purchase a home, you get the title to it. So it's not like a car where you have to pay off the car and then they'll mail you um, the title. When you purchase a home, you get the title and then the mortgage is recorded against the property. So uh, as far as the question goes, um, he you'd have to talk to the mortgage company as to whether or not there's, um, you need to update that. But you can still do a, some sort, you can do a transfer on death instrument or other estate plan to be able to put your children's names on the home. 
did that answer that person's question? Hopefully. <laughs> if you have any follow-ups, if we answer a question and you have any follow-ups, feel free to resubmit or to step up to the mic, okay? Uh, something I don't know if it was mentioned, uh, there is a fee to file a toady. Uh, that is a $50 fee. So. Um, so just, you know, as I mentioned earlier, as we wait for more questions, which of course arrive now, um, I am with Legal Aid Chicago, and one of the benefits of having Legal Aid Chicago, don't let the name fool you, we represent folks throughout Cook County, it's not just Chicago. So if you are here because you live in Cook County and you wanted to find out what services are available to you, our office offers toadies for free. So as they mentioned in the presentation and as the clerk mentioned, you can't trust everybody, but I promise if you come to us, you can trust us. Um, so if you are over the age of 60, you automatically qualify for free legal services if you're a resident of Cook County. There are income limits otherwise, and generally it's 150% of the federal poverty line or lower. But if you're not sure if you make that or if you make too much, just call us and we will take you through the process to find out. Because if you have this piece of paper and you say the only attorney I know who does this is sitting right here, she may be overwhelmed, you can call our office at 312-341-1070. And I do have flyers with that, pay that phone number so you don't have to worry about writing it down. Keep those index cards for questions. But if you want to call us, we can make an appointment for you to meet with an attorney to get the toady filled out. Once it's filled out, the only thing you have to pay for is that $50 filing fee. You can do your appointment over the phone, you can do it over Zoom, or you can come to our offices downtown. And then when you file the paperwork, you can file it in person downtown, or you can pay an extra $5 and mail it in. So. Legal Aid Chicago can help you with the toady for free for your home. We also do powers of attorney and living wills. So I will be at that table after this portion of the evening if you have additional questions about Legal Aid Chicago or if you wanted to grab some materials. Okay, we just received a um, question on, online and the question is, can you use a toady for business? Who wants to take the question? We do have a, an attorney online that's answering some of these questions, but for this audience, um, someone please answer, can you use a transfer on death instrument for business? So a transfer on death instrument is for property. So if you're saying you want to leave your entire business and like the business plan and your customers, no, that is a different thing that you would have to talk to an estate planning attorney about. However, if you're saying, I own a store and I want to leave this property to my sister or to my cousin. You can technically do a toady for any real property in the state of Illinois. That is a relatively recent change in the law. Another one, one of the questions we have online is where do I obtain the form for the transfer of bank accounts? One of the items in the presentation, uh, the bank usually will have that form. All right, another question from the cards. Uh, my property is in a land trust. Does this help with transfer upon death? The answer is yes. So, and I'll tell you about a, a, a little bit about land trusts. They used to be a very popular way to transfer your um, real estate to your, um, to beneficiaries, your children or whomever. Um, the land trust departments at the banks have, mostly been absorbed by just a handful of, of um, banks that remain having land trust apartments. You have to pay an annual fee and, um, and it, it does work to be able to transfer that property, but you have the ongoing fee. And then um, we've recently had matters where there's been litigation because of the land trust, or if the beneficiaries aren't named, you still will have to go through probate. And so if you have a land trust, you just have to check in and make sure, and it might be worth seeking out an attorney who will just give you an estate plan check-in, you know, um, 
for example, like we'll have people come in and say, I just want to make sure that I have everything right. And then, um, you know, there's not a charge for that, but um, just to check in and make sure that it's, it's properly going to the people that you want it to. All right, another question on the cards. Uh, is having a beneficiary sufficient for 401k bank accounts, property, or do you all require a form? If I, if I... Okay, so, uh, and I'll answer that. The, the question is, um, is it okay to just have a beneficiary named on all of your accounts? And, um, and, and then I assume that that would also include a transfer on death instrument. There is a way um, if you're um, trying to do sort of an ad hoc approach to an estate plan, you can have um, a transfer on death um, instrument for your real estate. You can name beneficiaries on all of your accounts. Um, but you should still at least have a, a simple will in that scenario. Um, the alternative approach to that is to have a trust um, and to name the beneficiary of all those accounts, the trust. And a benefit of having a trust, there's a few benefits to having a trust, but one is it'll, um, uh, it'll allow your successor trustee to be able to step in and then distribute your assets the way that you want it to, if you um, are talking about minor children, things like that. Um, and then the other benefit is that a trust can allow your trustee to step in and take care of you during your lifetime in case you become incapacitated. So they're able to access your accounts and to be able to continue to pay for your care and things like that, um, as opposed to a will, which only will go into effect upon your passing and the transfer on death instrument, obviously as well. Shift gears to the uh, the fraud alert uh, form that we uh, have. Uh, there's a question online that asks, "Do we have to fill this out annually?" You do not. Uh, once you've filled it out, you're you're good to go. No uh, update update needed, uh, unless of course you purchase a new property, which means you have a new PIN, and then you of course need to uh, register with that PIN number. So, oh, all right. Um, there's been another question online about um, joint tenancy. Uh, that is a type of ownership of the property. And to avoid possibly giving legal advice, I'm going to ask one of the two attorneys next to me to explain the various types of tenancy. So uh, joint tenancy is um, a designation where you are both co-owners. And, um, uh, and so upon the death of one joint tenant, it automatically becomes the sole property of the surviving joint tenant. So for instance, some, some um, families, there may be a mom and a child on, a, on an account. And technically upon one of their passing, say the mom's passing, it automatically becomes the property of the child, um, which, which can, can lead to disagreements among families if, that's not, if that was not the, um, the main account holder's intention. But so joint tenancy goes to the surviving joint tenant upon the death of one tenant. And then it's only held by that person. So then there's going to be additional consideration. What is that surviving joint tenant going to do? Because they've got to have some sort of plan for their future um, and upon their passing. And then tenants by the entirety is a specific designation that a married couple is allowed to have um, on their home. And um, it still is joint tenancy. It goes to the surviving spouse upon the death of one spouse, but um, there's other uh, benefits to it. Part of it um, is that uh, they can't attack your marital home if there's um, you know, issues with, with respect to that. You're allowed to be able to live in your marital home. The tenants in common, I'll just quickly say tenants in common is the default. And so if you don't specifically name joint tenancy or tenants by the entirety, then it's the default and say it's um, uh, two individuals that, and one individual passes away, that half, their half interest in the property passes to their heirs at law. So that leads me to a follow-up question, okay. Kathleen. On our TODI form, uh, there is a section where it asks us to, or asks the uh, person filling it out, to choose between joint tenants in common with right of survivorship 
or tenants in common without right of survivorship. Right. So. Right. And so that, yeah, that's, that's really nice wording um, uh, that the clerk has uh, provided you with. And that, that is self-explanatory. So that shows joint tenants in common with right of survivorship. That means it goes to the joint tenant upon um, the death of one joint tenant. And then the tenants in common means without the right of survivorship. Thank you. All right, another question from the cards. Uh, where are TODI records kept? How can they be accessed after recorded? So you, um, you know, once you fill out a TODI, it'll be recorded in our office. Our office is basically a repository for documents, uh, you know, all different types of documents. And so that's, they're kept in our office. Um, they can be accessed, you just come into the office, pr prove who you are, I mean, don't just take your word for it. You need to show us who you are. We're usually just a government ID will be fine. Um, uh, and uh, yeah, that's how you do it. It'll be public record. So it's available on the clerk's website and you, uh, you do have to record it. So, um, you know, take that extra step after signing. Uh, that uh, prompted another question in my head, uh, which is uh, what if somebody fills out a toady and they decide they want to change the information on a toady? You can file another one. So I was actually just thinking we should mention this. The most recent toady is what controls. So if I file a toady tomorrow and I say, I let's, let's presume I own my home alone. I file a toady tomorrow and I say, I want Karen Yarborough to get my house upon my passing and I file it. You have to move to DuPage County though. I'm sorry. Um, so let's say that I list her as the beneficiary. I go, I get it file stamped, it's recorded. It's valid the moment it's recorded. So if I walk out and get hit by a CTA bus and pass away, all Karen has to do is file a paper saying, I accept Barbara's house. But if I walk out of that building and I don't get hit by a CTA bus and I get a call from Clerk Yarborough later and she yells at me and says, you did a terrible job at that forum. I don't ever want to talk to you again. I can go in on Friday and file a new paperwork that says, I would like to leave my house to Brian. Yay, you get to move to DuPage County. And once that one is file stamped, the old one, it's no longer valid. So it's whatever was filed most recently that controls. So if you have a toady, I've heard from several folks already while I was sitting at that table that they did a toady a long time ago. Go look it up. Make sure that you still like those people. <laughs> and you all laugh, but I mean that in the most serious of terms. It's a good idea, just so there is less confusion for the folks that you leave behind. However, no, you don't. You just have to make sure the person who is receiving your property knows that they are listed as the beneficiary so that they can go file the paperwork that says, I accept. Because you're doing your part. You're saying, I want my house to go to this person. But if that person never says, yes, I want that house when you pass away, that house just kind of exists. So make sure that you communicate. And that's really important that you have these conversations. No one likes to talk about it, but it's a fact of life. So I'm sorry, I'm not leaving you my house, but you get to stay in Cook County. Okay, I'll take that. Um, online, um, a woman just asked a question. Well, she's saying that uh, individual filed a fraudulent deed on her property, and she's asking how can she get it removed? And our online attorney um, said that please call our office, contact our investigators at 312-603-4000 and let them review your inquiry. Even if you think, you know, if, you, if you're just feeling skittish about it, just do it. Pick the phone up, call them. They'll look up your chain of title and they can tell you what's there. Thank you, Clerk. Another question from online. Uh, if I put my property in trust, 
in a trust, will that protect it from fraud? No. The answer is no, right. if you didn't hear. But. Right, if we, if we had a way to be able to protect it, then, then um, we'd certainly be sharing it with you all today, but unfortunately, we're not there yet. Question, question from the cards, is a lodial title available in Illinois? I'm not familiar with this entity. I'm not familiar with it. Maybe, so. maybe the person who submitted this question could um, give us a little more information. There's a, a microphone right up in front. So my understanding of a lodial title means that you own the property outright. Uh, it's not subject to in eminent domain, but you, it, it's available in some other, I, I understand it's available in other states. Is it available here, like outright? You know, sometimes we believe we own something, but when eminent domain comes, you, you know, you're almost, your property is, you don't have the right to say no <laughs> uh, in reference to selling it. So right. that was my question. That's a very good question. And I, I do not know the answer to that. Um, I'm not familiar with that term. Okay. Um, and I hope it doesn't happen to you. <laughs> okay. Yeah. But um, I, I'm sorry that I, I don't have enough information to be able to provide you with an answer. Okay. Do you know? Are you meaning that, you know, when the um, government wants your property for a public purpose, can they take it? Yes. The answer is yes. They do it all the time. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's why I asked if a Lodeo um, title was. I've never heard that type that before, though. Oh. But I know what eminent domain is. If, I know. <laughs> if it's for a public purpose, yes, the government can. You know, that they're supposed to pay you a fair market value for the property. Mm -hmm. Whether they do it or not, I don't know. But I'm just saying that if it's for a public purpose. Okay. Thank you. All right. All right. We have another question from the cards. What if the person on the toady does not accept? Will the property go to the estate? Good question. Yeah. I, I, I... I believe the answer to that is that it would it would be as though that person had predeceased the property owner. And so if another person is not on there, if it's just to a singular beneficiary, then it would pass under the probate act. Oh, on, what does that mean, pass under the probate yeah, act? Why don't you restate the question, Devin, yeah. and then, then restate the, the answer, please. Sure. Question again is, what if the person on the toady, so uh, the beneficiary, the person who's uh, going to get whatever property is at, uh, at issue, will that property go to the estate? Yes, it would go to the estate, as long as there's not a second person named on there. Yep. It would be as though the, the person named on the toady predeceased the property owner. Do you mean how long do they have, what the timeline is for them to accept it? Okay. I don't know the answer to that. Don't do anything. I think she answered that a little a bit ago. If they do nothing, then it's just kind of in limbo. Um, you know, if the taxes aren't paid and nobody's paying attention, then, you know, again, there's your uncle, you know, the uh, state government or whatever, they'll take it and that'll be the end of that. So um, that, I think one of the things that's been said, you need to tell people what you're doing. If you have someone that you trust enough to leave your property to, you need to tell them. You need to tell them that you're leaving your property to them in case of your death. And that what they need to do to accept the property, because they actually have to accept the property and there's a document that they have to complete. But if nobody does anything, it becomes what we call a zombie property. It's just there. And at some point, uh, you know, the government will take it and do whatever they want to do with it, or it'll end up in probate, 
if somebody comes along later on and, and, and wants it. I know you all see a lot of vacant properties around, I'm sure. Some of those properties are what we call zombie properties. They're in limbo for one reason or another. Right, uh, question on the card. If you, if all you own is a house and bank asset, I believe is the writing, uh, it looks like you just need a toady and payable on death instrument. A will is not needed. Is that correct? So I always, I always say that you should at least have a simple will, but um, because what happens if that person on the toady doesn't survive you? Um, there, there's no backup plan. Um, and then uh, payable on death instrument, so the, the toady is dealing with the real estate, the bank account, um, you're saying name a beneficiary on the bank account. Yes, this is, I mean, you still should probably have a simple will because what's going to happen to any other thing that you own, your, your items of personal property. Um, if you have a car or jewelry or, or anything like that, none of those um, are left by any of these instruments. Another thing that's important to note, let's say you truly do just have a bank account with your money and then an empty house. So you, you say, I've got my toady and I've got my payable on death or my beneficiary designated. One other thing that is always recommended to have is what's called a power of attorney. And that's another thing that we can do for you for free at Legal Aid Chicago, because yes, there is life and yes, there is death. But there's also this third option where you're just kind of unable to do things for yourself. It's unfortunate. And I think that may be even harder to talk about than death. But let's say I walk out of the clerk's office after filing my toady and I get hit by that CTA bus. What if I end up in a coma for a month, for three months, for six months? My beneficiary doesn't get that bank account because I'm still alive. So who's going to access that bank account to make sure that the mortgage is paid on my house and the house doesn't go into foreclosure? Who's going to pay the electric bill? Who's going to pay those things that need to happen every day? So yes, you could technically cover everything with the payable on death and the toady, but a power of attorney for your financial decisions and a power of attorney for your healthcare decisions is also a really, really important piece of that puzzle. Let me just add one thing to that. Um, so the those are great during your lifetime, and then they they are no longer in effect after death. And so, um, so that's where a trust gives you a, a broader estate plan. All right, I've got a question on the line, and well, as well as one on the card, they're they're related. So. Um, Question from the internet is, how are we protected from someone filing a toady on our behalf or someone acting as me? I mean, so on the toady form, uh, one of the things that is needed, oh, thanks, uh, no, you're fine, is uh, you do have to uh, print your name sign your name and you have to do this before um, a notary, somebody who's authorized to you know, make a document official uh, as well as a witness. Uh, that person, that witness is, you know, somebody who attests that uh, they did this in their presence, that this person is who they are. So there are levels of, you know, attestation here, but. Uh, I believe it's two witnesses, right? Uh, two witnesses, yes, yeah, sorry. And as one of our learned attorneys suggested, sign up for a property fraud alert. I have a question um, from the uh, internet. My aunt is 85 and not that mobile. What options are available to her to complete a toady? And our online attorney says, you might want to inquire with Legal Aid Chicago and or the Center for Disability and Elder Law. So if anybody has that situation, um, we have somebody from Legal Aid Chicago here uh, and 
uh, certainly the Center for Disability and Elder Law, uh, you can contact them as well. So just as a reminder, our intake line is for everyone online, since you can't access my flyers right now, that number is 312-341-1070. So in the situation that Clark Yarbrough just mentioned, we could do a phone or Zoom appointment. The only thing is that the, it was an aunt, correct? The aunt herself would have to be the one doing it unless you have power of attorney for your aunt. So I can't call and say, I wanna fill out a toady for my mom because I'm not my mom's power of attorney, but my mother could call and do it. But if I were my mother's power of attorney, I could do it with her. It depends on the exact situation, but we can do virtual appointments. You don't have to come downtown. All right, another question from the cards. If you have a simple will, does the toady supersede the will? Yes. That's simple. Um, I, I'm Pastor Brooks. I am so excited about this. This information is crazy amazing. And Honorable Karen Yarbrough, we're going to continue to answer the questions, but I'm so excited about this. I want to do something bigger for people to get this information. I want to get this thing so simple that an older person can get the information they need. And, and Honorable Karen Yarbrough, I want Grace Central um, and a lot of the pastors here to be a lifeline for this information. I'm going to create an auxiliary here in Grace Central that we have a connect way that we can have accurate information so that when people call, you will go straight to the people you need to talk to and you don't have to be scammed or anything. We also have pastors here that I'm very proud and honored uh, to celebrate them that prayerfully. They'll be a part of this too, uh, where we really help people for real. We have Pastor Chauncey Brown, Second Baptist Church. We have Carl Mabins, Change Ministries. We have uh, uh, Romandis Moore, um, um, City on the Hill, and we have Tanya Brockington, Progressive Church. Did I miss any pastor here? Uh, also, Pastor Edie is a part, but I want to make sure, just in case somebody didn't really get it, call Grace Central Church, 708-344-5020, and I promise you, we're going to make sure you get to the right people, because we care about you. Well, I care about you too. And it's my job. Um, we're out in the community. We don't wait for people to come to us. Um, uh, you've met Robin Staggers here. We're gonna share her information. You'll hear from her in, in a few minutes. And anybody who would like us to come to your, uh, your church, your, uh, any, anywhere, we will come and we will share this information. Now, um, I think Gay Chase is still here. Is she still here? There she is. So when we did this um, workshop in Bellwood, uh, Gay is an attorney. She actually provides this information and does the, uh, I think you do the notarization for the transfer on death instruments in the mayor's office. That mayor, uh, he, he said that he had he needed to know that his citizens that he serves has this information. And so Gay is an attorney. That's what she does in the village of Bellwood. And she's here with us this evening. So if you, um, we are available though, uh, Pastor, whatever, whatever you want us to do, we are here to serve. Next question. Oh, there was a question. Um, uh, 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 let's see. Oh, <laughs> question. How or who can arrange for this forum to be live in our neighborhood? I'm glad you asked that question. <laughs> this is online. Okay, so I'm going to, uh, oh, uh, uh, Patty Delgado, wants, she lives in a predominantly Hispanic neighborhood. It'd be great to offer this information to Spanish-speaking people. We can do that. We do do that. So just know that, um, you know, the Cook County Clerk's Office is here to serve and we want people 
to have this information. I know that pastors get, um, you know, people come to you for information. They come to you um, when something happens untoward and they can know this and they can get this information from you. So I'm glad to see that you reached out to, to other pastors and uh, Pastor Brown and all the rest, I'll come, this, I, I know Second Baptist, okay, so I can come there. And anybody else's church, we can do that. So Robin will be coming up in a, after we finish these, these questions and she'll tell you the how. Do we have other questions? We, we do, Clerk, thank you. Um, this one is similar to one we just had. Uh, if you have a toady and a living trust with different beneficiaries, which, take pre which takes precedence? Well, the, the toady will supersede, um, that's, that's basically like with a, uh, the toady supersedes. So the toady wins against a will and a trust. I, oh, yes. Uh, you need to go to the microphone. Up with that is if you have a toady and the, um, the will has different beneficiary on it. And then you have the property that has the um, uh, different beneficiary on it or the contingent beneficiary. Then how would it, how does it supersede the will? Well, it, it depends on the timing of the recording. If you're talking about a toady, um, if that's the most recently filed, um, uh, recorded document against the property, then the, the toady um, supersedes for the property. any other um, transferred document. For the property. For the property. For the okay. property. Because there's something for the real else property. on the, okay. So, yeah. but, and there's something else on the wheel or some other things that are in the wheel. Right. The toady would only take care of the property. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. It only takes care of the real property okay. that's specifically listed by legal description in the toady. And I want to piggyback off a little bit off of what Kathleen was saying. Um, and uh, uh, Barb earlier, you know, let's say there's a toady filed and the uh, whoever owns the property wants to change the beneficiary and they're en route to the clerk's office and something, God forbid, something happens to them en route and they never make it. Guess which one controls? Not the second one. It didn't get recorded. All right. Um, I've, this one is a bit uh, a bit sticky. Mom passed away. Mortgage is still being paid by one of her children. How do they get the deed changed over to the child who is currently paying the mortgage? There was no will and no power of attorney. Who should they contact? A lawyer. And be prepared to enjoy the process of probate. Right, and so so um, it's it's really important to get at least a simple will if you can. But a will will not help you to avoid probate. And any time um, a person's uh, estate is worth um, more than a hundred thousand dollars, it automatically goes to probate. And even if you owe a lot of money on the house, if the house is worth more than a hundred thousand dollars. It's, it's going to have to go through probate unless you put into place one of these um, estate planning vehicles, be it a toady or um, a trust with deeding the property into the trust. Um, so unfortunately, it's going to have to be through probate. I, I know, I mean, we handle probate matters all the time in our office. I also am a volunteer for um, Chicago Volunteer, um, for the uh, CVLS. And they have a PCAP assistance program, which is probate court assistance program. If there is a, um, if, if someone qualifies for um, pro bono representation. And the whole idea of that program was set up because of the transfer of real estate um, and not being able to pay the legal fees because you wanna be able to stay in the home, but um, can't afford the thousands of dollars that probate court can cost. Thank you. Uh, next one card. Of you, before you go on, could uh, one of the attorneys, uh, you know, we talk about probate. Let's talk about what it is, where you go, what it may cost. So you know what we're talking about. Right. It doesn't matter who. Yeah. Go ahead. I'm happy to do that. So um, thank you, clerk. I, 
the probate process is if a person passes away with um, property in their name alone, so no joint tenants, no transfer on death instrument, um, bank accounts or real estate totaling more than $100,000, then it has to pass through probate. Um, if it's less than that, then you, you can use what's called a small estate affidavit. But um, if it's more than that, it has to go through probate. And what I mean by probate is you have to um, file a petition with the Circuit Court of Cook County. You have to petition to be appointed as the representative of the estate. If there's no will, um, then it's going to pass um, ter per the terms of the Probate Act. So uh, if you, um, just at the top level, if it's a husband and wife and, and the husband passes away, the estate by default passes only one half to the surviving spouse and then one half to the children um, if, if they leave children. So, um, which is kind of a shock to some people. Um, most of the time it's not an issue because your things are held in joint tenancy between husband and wife often, but um, if you don't, uh, if it's not in joint tenancy and you don't specify that by a will, um, then, it, then that's how it'll pass. So the probate process is a long process um, an attorney has to appear be on your behalf. You cannot be pro se in probate court. The filing fees and um, publication fees are about um, uh, $750. Attorney fees can be thousands of dollars. It lasts at a very minimum six months. The estate has to be open because it's got to be published for creditors. It's a long drawn out process. And so as much as you can avoid that, by putting into place this transfer on death instrument um, um, and, and having a discussion with your family um, about how you want things is great, but having it in writing is what's going to be the, the final say. So if you don't so, make it- So it's not cheap, it's not timely, you don't know what to do, so, you know, if you don't have to go that way, don't go that way. But if you do nothing, that's the way you're going to go. The, um, I know attorneys have told me over the years, expect to spend between five to $15,000 to go through probate with all the fees and what you're going to pay an attorney. So, I mean, if you got it like that, then, you know, we don't need to have this conversation. But the things that we're talking about here that you can do for yourself for $50, do that. I'm sorry I interrupted you, Devin. No, clerk, you can interrupt me anytime. Uh, so that's five to fifteen thousand dollars that could be going to your beneficiaries as opposed to you know people not your beneficiaries. Uh, the other takeaway from uh, Kathleen is uh, if you don't make decisions for your beneficiaries, the government will do it for you. So, um, question from the cards: uh, How? Can I leave my property to my oldest son, just son, but when he sells it, then I want him to split the proceeds with his five siblings for any gains and any gains will be divided six ways. <laughs> uh, from personal experience, I can tell you my grandmother tried this and well, she tried it. We'll put it that way. I mean, you, you can, there's a way you can set up a trust and leave a life estate to an individual um, and upon their passing, then it would go that way. But it's a complicated estate plan. And so you'd have to consult an attorney if that's your plan. All right, another question from the cards. How to add name or names to a property deed? You do, I, it depends on how you're, you're going to add them. I mean, there's, there's different deeds. So you could do, um, um, it, it would just be a new deed. You'd have to prepare, have an attorney prepare a deed and, and get it recorded. Um, maybe, would you be able to speak a little bit about uh, sometimes people will try to add their children maybe to the deed to the car before they pass away? Um, is there a benefit or not a benefit to doing that? Okay, so the, the challenge you face if you add someone to your account, your house, your car, um, is then they are um, they're an equal owner, right? And so what, what happens if they have creditors or, or there's um, an insurance claim against them or 
there's a lot of considerations that you have to think about besides just the ease of access to, to be able to pass that along to them. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, if, um, if you do hold something in joint tenancy, it's automatically going to go to that person upon your passing. And, um, and maybe that's not what your plan is. If maybe you just wanted them to be able to assist you in signing on your checking account, but you didn't want them to get the entire share. You wanted it divided equally amongst your children or however. Um, and so the one form that they um, showed earlier, which is helpful, is the beneficiary affidavit, which can be found on the Illinois Secretary of State's website. Um, and that would leave the car to, um, to the beneficiary upon your passing. Wonderful. Um... No more card question. Actually, no one, sorry. The presentation said for $6 and the paperwork said $10. Which one is correct? I believe they might be referencing the getting a deed, copy of the deed. Okay. Um, I believe you can get it for $5 online. Um, I'm looking at the website right now. Um, I have so. an online question that I can ask. If I understand it correctly, once a transfer on death instrument is filed, beneficiary must accept. Is there a fee for the beneficiary to do this? That's the first question. One of the attorneys, please. So the acceptance has to be filed. So they have to pay the $50 filing fee. Uh, but beyond that, it would depend on whether they fill out the form themselves or hire an attorney to do so. The form is available on Madam Clerk's website, um, as is the TODI form. So at base, it is $50 to file in person, $55 to file by mail, but you can do it yourself. Next question. I have a trust with a will and transfer on death instrument on accounts, leaving it to my only child, my son. If I decided to add his name onto my deed and he was to get divorced or somehow be involved in some kind of litigation, the complaining party could sue him and I would also be ultimately in jeopardy, right? Yes. <laughs> it, as... That's a long question and a short answer. <laughs> okay. The long and short of it is if it's your property, keep it as your property until you pass unless you are willing to put up all of the risk that comes with being a homeowner that was it, to someone that's not you. And it happens a lot and it's pretty common. It's, it's your property until you pass, especially if you've registered for fraud alerts so that nobody can take it from you before you pass. Exactly. <laughs> Our parents died without leaving a will. There's six of us. Do we need to change the deed? You can't change it, the deed. You can't change the deed. They would have to be the, they would have had to change the deed prior to their passing. And it depends on how much their estate is worth as to whether it will go through probate or not. Uh, but with six children, I imagine it will be a hotly contested probate case. Unless they all get along miraculously. I, I have no more cards. I'm still looking through the uh, online questions to be sure we um, addressed all of them. I have one. Okay. Um, the trust expired, was not extended. Will the toady take over? I guess, so I don't know. It must, uh, that person must be indicating that they had a land trust mm -hmm. um, and oftentimes the land trust companies will allow you to come up to to date um, and just pay late fees i'm not sure you know that that would be a question um, for the land trust company but if the toady the the once you put your property into a land trust you are not um, the registered owner of your property and so I don't know that the toady would, that you'd be able to effectively record a toady on that property. 
Here's a, here's a question. If a voice message is left for legal aid, how long before someone calls back with an intake appointment date and time? <laughs> uh, so we try our best to get back to everyone within 48 business hours. So if you call on a Friday at three and on Monday at three, you haven't heard back, that's only been 24 business hours, folks. However, I will say that that unfortunately is not always the case. The wonderful thing about legal aid is that we provide a needed service. The horrible thing about legal aid is that there is never enough time to address all of that need. So if you have called and left a voicemail, our goal is to call you back within 48 hours. And it also is dependent on which program you leave a voicemail for. So when you call us, there's a phone tree are you calling about a housing issue? Yes, or if yes, press one. Are you calling about, and it'll get you all the way through the tree. So if you leave a message for a toady, that's a smaller program within our office and you'll probably get a call back faster. However, if you call and you leave a message about, I have a family law issue, it's a very busy department. It may take three days. However, if for some reason you have not heard back and you feel like it's been too long, you can either call and leave another voicemail or on our website, legalaidchicago.org. When you go to that website, there's a little button at the top right that says apply for services. And that sends an email message to our intake team that says, hey, I need legal aid help. Can someone call me back? And unfortunately with voicemails and emails, we all get bogged down. So try one more time. I promise we want to help you. And I'm sorry if we have not gotten back to you quickly. We are very busy, but we will do our very best to do it within two days. Can someone speak to putting your child on the deed in case of your death? Also, is this something that can be automatically included in a trust? So uh, um, thank you, clerk. Again, this this question, um, uh, just as Barbara had indicated before, if you add someone to your deed, yes, you can add your child to your deed, but then um, for better or for worse, they are a property owner of that property. Um, and then the, the, the question about the trust, could you repeat the second part of that question, please, Madam Clerk? Well, our online attorney already answered the oh. question, so <laughs> we can't. Um, let's see, the second part of that was talking about automatically being included in a trust. If you put, put the child on the trust, I guess that's what she's saying. Do you want to share what the online attorney said for the I, he, Well, I can't. Oh, okay. Um, we've got about five minutes left. So you, if you have a burning question, get to the microphone. Just get to the microphone. There are no dumb questions. There are absolutely no dumb questions. What you don't know, you don't know. Um, Sherry asked a question. She said, if I have a bank account that I have a payable of death instrument completed, are the accounts subject to creditors or do the beneficiaries receive all the money in the accounts? Let me repeat the question or I have a bank account that I have a payable of death instrument completed. Are the accounts subject to creditors or do the beneficiaries receive all the money in the accounts? So uh, the beneficiary doesn't obtain the property until the passing. So, so a beneficiary's creditors, uh, if that's what the question is, um, those wouldn't come into play uh, during the lifetime of the account holder. Okay, we have a burning question. <laughs> Let's have it. Okay, this is about the taxes. I don't know if you're going to get to that segment of um, how do you deal with the back taxes for the property or the assistance for taxes. Do you mean that, a property that you own or one that you're receiving as no, a like a property that I own on you were saying that we were going to cover that. And so I didn't know because you were saying we're getting to the end and we hadn't tapped on the taxes for the properties yet. 
We need to have a tax attorney here to discuss that. None okay. of these are okay. our tax yes. attorneys. All right, thank you. Okay, um, somebody said something? No, okay, okay. So all? we would need to have, um, what's your question though? What, what's your question in reference to back taxes? So I'm just trying to get caught up with some taxes. I have some taxes that's due on a building. And I don't want them to get sold. And I had some taxes that were sold before. I paid them off before they did the final sale. And I want to get it all caught up so that I don't lose my property. And my, I guess the other part of the question is, if I paid this certain amount of the taxes and someone else still hold a, uh, a portion of the taxes, I want to know how can I clear this slate so I can have total ownership of my building. Madam Clerk, may I address Go right one ahead. part of that? Thank you. So I am not a tax attorney. I cannot specifically address the situation. But what I can say to you is separate and apart from the toadies that we can do at Legal Aid Chicago, we, our consumer team can actually assist if you are potentially facing a tax sale. So if you just come over to me at the end of this, I will make sure to get you a flyer because that is something that happens, not just on business properties, but on your home. And we want to do what we can. They may be able to work out a repayment plan. They can. They are the attorneys who are experts in that area and can assist you. So I'll be happy to talk to you after this. Any last burning questions? We can take one and then Robin's gonna come and then Good. pastor's gonna come. Burning question. Clerk, there is one on the website. I don't know if. Uh, okay, you is it burning? Can you see if it's on fire? <laughs> <laughs> Let me see if it's on fire. Okay, well, I'll ask it. I almost lost my home, but got back on track with mortgage payments in June of 2022. As I check my D, I see the mortgage company name in place of my name. My name is under their name. Please advise. I mean, that, that person should check with the mortgage company. And then um, I'm not sure if they, they're saying that the, a deed was recorded that shows that, they, that the mortgage company owns it now. There, there has to be a lot of legal proceedings to get to that point. So I would start with the mortgage company. Okay. Um, okay, Th that's all the questions we're going to, to take, but um, I think you know some of our attorneys will stick around for a few minutes in case you had a burning one that you couldn't put, put in the, hey, was this helpful? Yeah. It was, okay, that's, that's what I need to know, if this was helpful. So Robin, why don't you come up and then, after Robin, um, Pastor. That was great free information, right? Yes. So now it's left up to you what you're going to do from this point. So because Clark Yarbrough has had a passion for this program for the many years that we've been out here, we find that you don't know what you don't know, right? And knowledge is power. So as we bring these forums out to the community, we want you to take advantage of what we're sharing with you and also share it with your loved ones, your family, your friends, so that they understand what they need to do. And even if they don't, tell them about our forums because they're free. We give away free gifts and we give away free information. So we're here to help you. And with that said, if anybody here wants to have one of these forums it, at their church or in their community, please give me a call. I'm Robin Staggers, and my number is 312-603-3974. Now, there are some conditions that we ask you to meet in order to bring these forums out to you. Um, you, may not be, you may not be able to guarantee that you can bring 50 people to this forum, but we ask that you try to have at least 50 people in the audience for these forums, because 
it takes us a lot to bring them out to you. And we don't want to be sitting talking to ourselves. So if you're interested, you can give me a call at the number I gave you, or you can see me after the event. And if you're interested, I'll tell you what the process is for getting one of these forms to you. Um, the property fraud alert forms, I asked you guys to hold on to them because we want to make sure that you're who you say you are when you're submitting this information to us. So we are asking that when you show us the forms, you sign them at the bottom, show us your ID. Fraud is very, very, very prevalent. And we wanna make sure you're who you say you are. Once we get those forms, we'll take them to our office, record the information in our system. You'll get an alert once the information gets into the system to let you know it's working. After that, then if you get an alert, uh, or a phone call or an email after that, you need to call our office, okay? To speak with one of our fraud investigators. Was there anything else? Um, I wanna thank um, Pastor Brooks, Lady Brooks and Miss Hade. Um, they have been awfully helpful to us in helping us bring this out. They work with us diligently. <laughs> They got all these pastors out here who are gonna take this information to their churches, right? Right. And we're glad you came out in this inclement weather. Um, the other thing is, let me see. I wanna thank our community partners, uh, Ms. Bertini from Legal Aid. I wanna thank Kathleen Duhigg from the Law Offices of Farrell and Farrell. We want to thank our online attorney, Kang Tren, who was diligently trying to answer all of the questions for the 90 registrants we had for online. I want to thank Devin Mapes. Devin Mapes, this was his first time out with us. Didn't he do a good job? He did a fabulous job. So we might have to have you as a replacement, Devin. You did so good. So thank you to all of our attorneys. I wanna thank our staff that's out tonight. I wanna thank Brian, Lindsay, Tim, our security, Don Sloan, and who else? Is that it? Kevin McDermott, yes. Kevin McDermott from our office is here. We can't thank you enough for having us out. It was our pleasure to bring this information to you. If you have any questions for the attorneys, as they said, when we close out, you can access them to get answers to something that you didn't want to ask publicly. Um, are there any questions? Oh, I want to thank Johnny Diggs in the back. He's our producer coach. <laughs> 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 we want to thank our the voice that you heard on our video. Frank, back there, that's the voice that you heard. It kind of looked like him, didn't it? And then we want to thank Carlos Rodriguez, one of the other um, staff from our communications team. So thank you all for coming out. Anything else, Clark? If there's nothing else, Pastor, you're going to close us in prayer. Did I miss anybody? Who? The treasurer. Oh, right. Hey, treasurer Melissa Conyers Irvin joined us tonight. Yes. Yes. Yes, she came to join us. Pastor wants you to come say something, please. here look at the family I, i'm here as family on tonight because we're all learning information that we need this is very useful information so i came tonight as the chicago treasurer to see what information i can take back to chicago that's going to help us as well which most of you 
you know, if you live in the suburb of Chicago, you live in Chicago. So to Clerk Yarbrough and the staff, this was awesome. Pastor Brooks, Lady Brooks, and I know all of the clergy that are here, I want you all to know this is so very helpful. We cannot underestimate the knowledge that was provided on tonight. And the only thing that I ask is that you do not keep it to yourself. Please spread this information along because this is how, when we talk about building generational wealth, that is what's needed in our community. And this information tonight will help us build generational wealth. So thank you. Thank you so much. Are there any veterans in the audience? Oh my God. Great. We have a veteran services office in our office where you can file your DD-214 for free. You can get a copy or well, your family once you go on to the next slide can get a copy of your DD-214 upon your death from our office quicker than going to the VA. So what happens is when you register your DD-214 in our office and tell me I'm correct or not, if I'm correct or not, Brian, Brian will get it registered and you'll get a certificate of registration saying that the DD-214 is filed in our office for safekeeping. And you'll have to bring your DD-214 down to our office see Brian in our veteran services office and he'll help you get it filed, okay? Second thing, we have a uh, veterans discount card that we give to military veterans. So, and it's free. So we give away a lot of free stuff, right? Not only information. So you can get your free veterans discount card through us. We're here tonight to take your application. Brian will take your picture and we will send you your free veterans discount card in the mail. And it offers you an opportunity to get discounts at over 150 vendors that we partner with. Is that a good deal? Yeah. So I'm glad I brought that up. Mm -hmm. So congratulations to you and thank you for your service. We got free, well, we got free White Sox tickets when the season is, is well, we're, we're negotiating a new contract. And we have free tickets to the Chicago Wolves game, the Chicago Wolves. So you can see Brian about how you can get those tickets, get a flyer. Also, yes, we have more. Clark is over uh, su uh, su suburban elections. Yes, and we are hiring. So if you know people that want to work a season, seasonal job, we have flyers on our table that tell you you can make $200 or you can make $360, depending on what you're hired for for one day. So if you know people who are interested, you have parishioners who are interested, or if you yourself are interested and not working, you want to make some good money for one day, it's a long day though. You can apply through us and get the information from our table. Was there anything else? We're looking for judges for the election. So the election is young ones, yeah. Especially, Especially young ones. 17, 18 year olds. They have to be registered to vote. No, they don't have to be registered to vote. So send them, we, we need judges desperately. So if you know of some young people who wanna work, willing to work, send them to us, okay? All right. All right. Yay. Any, did I miss something? I think I covered it all. Okay. Okay, so Pastor Brooks, take away. I want my wife to say something. Amen. Good evening, everyone. I wanna thank you all for coming out tonight. I am so honored and humbled to be amongst this uh, wonderful group of clergy who are all our friends and these uh, subject matter professionals and attorneys. I wanna thank you guys for spending time with us tonight. Of course, the treasurer and clerk Yarbrough, I am so honored. And I wanna thank Grace Central. Grace Central, wave your hand. Grace Central in the house. Amen. Thank you for helping get the word out uh, to everyone uh, who came tonight. And uh, we have free stuff too.
Oh, we're going to get to Sylvia. Sylvia is the absolute best. Anybody who knows Grace Central knows Sylvia. She runs the church. She runs the church. I'm next to me and the pastor. She thinks she runs this church. Uh, but we're a wonderful team. And uh, so our free stuff. So any, we uh, serve eight communities, Westchester, Bellwood, Broadview, Hillside, Stone Park, Berkeley, North Lake. Oh, I'm good. Okay. Uh, with our food pantry. So we give out incredible groceries every Tuesday and Wednesday. If they're residents of those places, if they're not, have them come once. They can shop. They get everything. Meat, produce, fresh produce, uh, eggs. <laughs> Eggs, eggs, <laughs> milk, cheese, uh, uh, et cetera. And you just need your ID to sign up. And uh, maybe you don't need it, but someone you know may. So please tell them to come on over here to Grace Central. Uh, go to our website, gracecentral.net. And you can see the hours is Tuesday, 5 to 7, and Wednesday, noon to 2. So we have labored already on today. And so uh, that's what I have to say. Oh, at Grace Central, our pastor teaches us 411, not 911. And tonight was definitely 411. Amen. Amen. So that's the oh, and then I would be remiss, and this is my last thing. If I did not invite you to church on Sunday morning, I know we have other churches and pastors here, but we start at 1030 and we uh, do our best to be out by noon. Uh, if you can't get here because of the snow, check us out on Facebook and YouTube, Grace Central Church. All right, that's all I got to say. God bless you guys. I also want to uh, thank, uh, she's really a hard worker over here, her and her husband, Ned. Um, Sylvia, hey, come over um, and say, just say hi. Good evening, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here, and I'm excited about the information that you've received, and I could share it with others as well. And I, I want to just say to Robin, Robin was incredible in working together. You have a great person on your team and it, she was easy to work with and thank you so much it made my job easier too <laughs> thank you pastor for allowing me to be the administrator here uh first lady it's a, a pleasure that's All it right. <laughs> uh there is so much room at the top when a lot of people are fighting to stay at the bottom i'm gonna say that again it's so much room at the top. Everybody can be happy. It's crazy room up there. But when we fight to stay at the bottom, we mess up all of the top. And the ones that's up there get everything. What Chicago Treasurer said was so important. Please make sure when you leave this place, you share this information with somebody. You never know, you might be saving some grandchildren, great, great grands when their inheritance is not properly done, you can save somebody's lives. Aspire to inspire before you expire. Aspire to inspire before you expire. Whoever's a real visionary, that's a principle they operate in, not because of, but in spite of. Without a vision, no, and, and I'm real clear, it's one vision, but the people under that vision accomplish a lot of things. And I wanna really honestly, I love you. Thank you for being the visionary and all of the wonderful people under you uh, that this has happened. A lot of people are gonna be blessed under your authority and I'm just honored to have you here. And when I say Grace Central, to assist with Pastor Chauncey, Pastor Carl Mavens, Romandis Moore, Pastor Tanya, is we're gonna be conduits and resources. I'm gonna see if I could take this thing on a tour. Do the title and we just bombard every place we wanna go. Another thing I believe that just so we can have the information, I'm not sure, but this same program are in other suburbs and surrounding areas, right? Right, yes? So if you're not, City. They have, in many cases, somebody asked that question about another county. Many of the other counties in the state do have the property fraud alert. But the uh, what we do in Cook County uh, in terms of programming and what have, everybody doesn't do that. You know, we just do it because we do it because we can. We we do it because we can. 
You know, we do it because we can. We do it because of you. Do me a favor, everybody in this place, if you don't mind, let's stand up and put our hands together for the honorable Karen bro, we love, it's true. We love you and it, yeah, we love you. We love you. We love you. Somebody scream. And all of the attorneys, no, no, thank you so much. It means a lot to us or uh, everything, okay? All right, thank you so much. Let's grab hands. I wish I had some food for you guys, but um, we're supposed to eat this late, okay? <laughs> all right, uh, let us uh, pray. Lord, we love you. Thank you for your awesome mercy and grace. Thank you that you are eternal. Uh, thank you that you have no respecter of person. And thank you that uh, you're not, you'll open, if we open up, and ask you, there's nothing that we cannot accomplish or do. Put us around the right kind of people so that we can get this job done within our dash. If we give you glory and we give you honor, we'll do what you tell us to do. And we'll make sure no one, as Reverend Jesse Lewis Jackson would say, is left behind. Thank you, bless us as we leave this place, angels of protection around our hearts, our heads, our families, our, our, our husbands, wives, and family. Then God orchestrate events to move us in your will that we may clearly interpret seasons. So we will know this season where the Honorable Karen Yarbrough is in this office, that she got some troopers that's gonna make sure this thing is done. In Jesus' name, amen.